Hello students, hope you all are doing good. Before telling you what I am teaching you in today's video lesson, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen these kind of pictures in your daily newspapers, news channels, magazines etc? So what are these pictures? These pictures are nothing but graphs. So what are graphs? Graphs are visual representation of numerical data. So why do we need graphs? Why do we use graphs? Because graphs actually helps you to do lot more and more easily than you would do with a table full of numbers. And it's definitely interesting to look at colorful picture than the set of numbers on a table, right? And it also helps you to compare quantities, make observations or see trends and also it helps you to draw insights from the data given to us. You already know there are multiple ways to represent a data on a graph according to various situations. So in today's video lesson, let me quickly brush you up some types of graphs that you are already aware of and also introduce you to a new kind of graphs. Here, look at this graph. This graph represents Anu's marks in three terminal examinations. By looking at this graph, we can say that Anu's marks in third terminal examination is the highest and in the first terminal examination, it is the lowest. What we are doing here? We are comparing Anu's performance by looking at those bars. So, a graph which is used to show comparison among categories is called a bar graph. So, what is bar graph? A graph which is used to show comparison among categories. Bar graphs can also have double bars and which are called as double bar graphs. For example, look at this graph. Here, sales of fruits is given over two days. Here, the sales on Monday is shown in blue bars and Tuesday represented in red bars. From this, you can compare sales of respective fruits over two days. Let's look into pie chart. Assume your mom gave you rupees 100 as a pocket money and you spend it as follows. You spend 40 rupees for studies, 20 rupees for sports, 20 rupees for movies, 10 rupees for food and 10 rupees for other expenses. You have 100 rupees that means you have a hole and you are dividing this hole among different types of expenses. And this circle represents the hole. So a pie graph is used to compare the parts of a whole. Now look at this graph. Students of 8th standard are divided according to their weights. Here there is no hole, but it has bars over the intervals. There are no gaps between the bars as there are no gaps between the intervals. So a graph that shows data in intervals is called a histogram. What is a histogram? A graph that shows data in intervals. These are the graphs which you have already learnt in your previous year. Now solve few problems for practice. The number of students in six different classes are given below. In class 7th, there are 120 students. In class 8th, there are 135 students. In class 9th, there are 130 students. In class 10th, there are 150 students. In 11th, there are 80 students. And in 12th, there are 75 students. Represent the data on the bar graph. Problem number 2. Given data shows performance of two unit tests of a student. In English, she got 70 marks in first test and 78 marks in second test. In Hindi, she got 60 marks in first test and 77 in second test. In Maths, she got 87 in the first test and 60 in the second test. In Science, she got 60 marks in the first test and 70 in second test. And in social science, she got 60 in the first test and 60 in the second test too. Now draw a double bar graph to represent this data. Problem number 3. 
the number of hours spent by a school boy on different activities in a working day is given below activities sleep number of hours spent is 8 hours for school he spent 7 hours for in home he spent 4 hours for play he spent 2 hours and for other activities he spent 3 hours draw a pie chart to represent this data problem number 4 given below is the frequency distribution of the heights of 50 students in a class so the class interval here represent the heights of students and frequency represents number of students so from 140 to 145 it's 8 students 145 to 150 it's 12 students 150 to 155 it's 18 students 155 to 160 it's 10 students and in 160 to 165 it's 5 students draw a histogram representing the above data now let me tell you an incident last week my friend renu was sick so i took her to the hospital but the doctor told me that she has a mild fever and you need to check her body temperature every 4 hours so i recorded her body temperature every 4 hours and it was as follows at 6 am it was 37 degree at 10 am it was 40 degree at 2 pm it was 38 degree and at 6 pm it was 35 degree look at this data now can we represent it as a histogram no right because it has no intervals can we represent it as a pie graph no because there is no hole which we can divide it into parts right so how can we represent this data in this data what to observe is the data continuously changes over periods of time so we use line graph here so what is line graph so a line graph is nothing but a graph which displays data that changes continuously over periods of time how to draw graph to represent this data let us take a sheet of paper and draw x axis and y axis let us mark time along x axis and temperature along y axis at 6 am what is the temperature it's 37 degrees celsius so let us mark it as a point which is 37 units above 6 am then we will mark the next point at a height 40 units vertically above 10 am next we will mark third point at a height 38 units vertically above 2 pm and the last point is marked at a height 35 units vertically above 6 pm then connect the points with the line segments this jagged line along y axis here represents y axis doesn't start from zero such graphs are called as line graphs so now you got to know how to plot a line graph and when will you use it so now let us solve some more problems so that you can be clear with this the following graph shows the temperature of a patient in a hospital recorded every hour what was the patient's temperature at 1 pm now look at this graph let us draw a vertical line at 1 pm it will meet our line graph at this point then what is the height of this point it's 36.5 isn't it so the patient's temperature at 1 pm is 36.5 degree celsius so here the next question is when was the patient's temperature 38.5 degree celsius now look at the graph and draw horizontal line at 38.5 it meets at this point then draw a perpendicular line through this point to x axis where it will meet on x axis at 12 right so at 12 noon the patient's temperature is 38.5 degree celsius from this example you could make observation from the given graph So now let us draw a graph from the given data. 
the number of days a hillside city received snow in different years given as in the year 2003 it was 8 days in the year 2004 it was 10 days in the year 2005 it was 5 days and in the year 2006 it was 12 days first let us represent the data by points that is in the year 2003 you have 8 days of snowfall in the year 2004 you have 10 days of snowfall in the year of 2005 you have 5 days of snowfall and in the year of 2006 you have 12 days of snowfall then connect these points by line segments solve this problem as an exercise the number of electric bulbs manufactured by a factory during five consecutive years is given below in 2006 it's 2 lakh in 2007 it's 8.5 lakh in 2008 it's 7 lakhs in 2009 it's 5 lakhs and in 2010 it's 1 lakhs Draw the line graph representing the above data. Problem number 2. By observing the given graph, answer the following questions. What were the sales in the year 2012, in the year 2014, in the year 2010? Compute the difference between the sales in 2012 and 2016. Now, let us recall what are the things we have learned today. We have learned different types of graphs. What are those? Bar graph, pie graph, histogram and its examples. And we also learned what are line graphs and its examples. We will continue our discussion on linear graphs and its application in the next class. Hope you all enjoyed the class. Have a nice day.